Hi everybody, Christy Lesher here. Back again after a week off. Back to Tuesday night yoga with the Assisi Institute. If you're um, just joining, which you would be, because I just started the live stream. Welcome. Glad to have you with us. Um, I'll talk just for a couple minutes. Uh, we let people kind of get get joined in and and um, and come on. So I'm going to. We're going to be moving tonight in the direction of um, having awareness of core. And um, I like to say this. I've said this the last couple times I've been on Facebook Live. If you've been with me in a live class, <laughs> then you know that if I'm talking about the core, I'm talking about the entirety of the core, right? We um, tend to say, you know, thinking about the core in our Western fitness mindset. Um, it's very one-sided. We're just thinking of the front side of the core. We're thinking of our abdominals. Um, and I like to think about the entirety of the core, so all the way around. So it's, it's, it's abdominals, but it's um, the side muscles, right, along your flank. And then it's the back muscles. And I believe that if we work uh, in a way um, through poses uh, in, intelligently, that we um, set ourselves up for better long-term health through anything that might be going on, right? I so uh, had ongoing back issues, low back issues before I started practicing yoga on a regular basis and um, have found that the attention, not just to the front side of my core, but to the musculature along my back and, and around my sides and ensuring that the entire cylinder of my core is toned and um, strong, strong yet flexible, right? Those are the two components to healthy movement. Um, so that's what we're going to be focused on tonight. So um, we've got 45 minutes um, starting now until 6.45 where we'll be together practicing. And if you, um, I think I see some people are joining. So if you are having any issues hearing me, I think everything's set up fine after changing location. From the beach, if you joined my last session, I was at Oceanside. Um, so, but I think everything is, is set and I'm assuming you all can hear me. So we'll start um, as we do uh, with some breath observations. So I'm going to back up and sit on my seat and talk through some guided breath work and observation. And then we will move and kind of we'll work our way up in stages toward um, you know, a couple poses, a, a few rounds of poses that are going to, in different layers and elements, um, bring our awareness to, you know, the, the entire cylindrical area of, co of our core. So, here we go. Back up. So, if you have some props um, to make a seat, that would be ideal. So I've, I'm sitting on a, a cork block with a blanket um, to cushion. A couple blankets can be used, um, a few pillows, a bolster. Um, I do encourage a bit of a lift up off the floor because it allows us to bring our spine and our, our whole um, space where we want to be focusing on breath into a more easy posture. If we're sitting flat on the floor, we can get a bit domed in the back and then we're compressing our lungs and pressing on our diaphragm. So if you can elevate yourself up off of the floor a little bit or a lot, depending on you know how things go when you sit, we want to have some level of dropping through the knees, right? We want the, the legs to kind of um, fall away and, um, and head in the direction of the floor. Um, so that's sort of our guide for how high our seat is. So if you're sitting, and you have taken a little bit of an elevation off the floor, but the knees are still in this vicinity, then I would say maybe we want to go a little bit higher. So, you know, maybe double the, the height of what you're sitting on so that the pelvis can tip forward, the knees can um, head in the direction of the floor, kind of release toward the floor. And then we get this place where we can find, right, the, the spine on the back is, we're never asking for a flat spine, 
but the spine has all of its natural curves, right? It becomes in at the lumbar spine and out at the thoracic spine and then back in at the back of the cervical spine. And so we've got all of that curvature of the back body. And then we just bring our awareness in. So I'd invite you, if you're still settling and gathering, keep going. If you're already settled, then I'd invite you to kind of bring that awareness in. If it helps to close your eyes, go ahead and lightly close your eyes. And to start to bring the awareness in. So out from all of the tasks and to-do lists and all of the things that might be tugging on us that either preceded or will follow. Instead, we're just going to be now. We are going to be in this moment. And so the breath helps us find ourselves in this now moment. We bring our awareness into the breath. Strain the breath through the nose. And just take a couple cycles of breath here in this natural state as you come to your mat without asking anything of the breath other than to just find it in the body. And so strain that breath through the nose. Inhale and exhale, smooth and steady. See if you can release any holding in your face. So we want to soften the jaw, soften the throat, soften the eyes. Kind of like gravity, they kind of give over to gravity, right? And if we were in Shavasana, everything would melt back and down toward the floor. Since we're sitting, things will just soften and release in the direction of gravity in this upright position. And then for today's practice, we're just going to see if we can move the breath to this place of even inhale, exhale. So the inhale, right, we tend to focus on the inhale breath. And the exhale is a bit of this afterthought. So on your next inhale, take an observation. See how long that inhale takes. I find it helpful to count beats, right, um, seconds. I count as I take my inhale, and it's usually a three or a four second inhale. Maybe we're starting to think about elongating that a bit and slowing the breath down. And then I see if I can even my exhale out so that it is the same duration as my inhale. So if you were on a three beat or a four beat inhale, See if your exhale can be just that long, the same length. And find that mostly not by exhaling more to make the exhale longer, but by slowing it down. So now we're shifting into this other gear instead of just observing the breath and where it is, but now we're going to kind of take a little bit of control over the breath and apply a bit of a practice to the breath. So instead of breath observation, now we're in practice. So carry on, just follow this breath for a few cycles. Even inhale, exhale, both sides of the breath, equal length and duration. And a couple other notes as we experience this breath in and out is to keep your mind's eye on the shape of the breath as it comes in, right? As the inhale comes in, we have this di the diaphragm drops and the inhale then begins to inflate the lungs fill up, but they also fill out to the left and right, and they also fill front to back body, right? So there's this three-dimensional vessel uh, shape that is our lungs, right? That, that we're moving in all directions as we inhale and then the reverse is true as we exhale. So just 
Follow that even inhale, exhale pattern. A couple more cycles. Scan the face. Sometimes as we apply a practice to the breath, we tense the jaw or we furrow the brow because we're thinking about what we're doing. So see if you can remove that layer of tension from the face. And on the last couple of breath cycles here, really think about as the inhale comes in, right, this gathering up along the spine, there's this lift up out of our seat. And as we exhale, it is a grounding, descending down into the sitting bones, into whatever it is that they're, whatever it is you're sitting on, making that good earthy contact. And as we come back into now, into this moment, right, let your next inhale come. And then as the exhale comes, let it be passive, right? So now we're going to let go of the work of elongating that exhale. We're going to just allow the breath to return to its natural steady state. And set that breath work aside and just return to your kind of eat your steady state, natural state of breath. And if you were practicing that breath work with your eyes closed, then I'll invite you to slowly crack the eyes, let the light come back in. Bring your awareness back to your surroundings. And then we'll go ahead and uncross the legs. So go ahead, help the knees. As we unfold, extend the legs out in front. Come off of that seat. So I'm going to just come off of my blanket and my block and set them aside. And go ahead, just extend the legs out in front. Kind of give them a little shake sitting for a moment. We're going to move into, before we come up away from the floor, we're going to come um, onto the back body with our strap. So hopefully, if you've been with me for the first few practices in August where we were doing um, practice on Tuesday nights, um, if you don't have a yoga strap, you've probably found something in your house that's a good substitute. So hopefully that's close by. Um, and we're going to go into Supta Padangustasana, which is to find a little length along the back of the legs. Um, we are going to be moving toward core. Um, so we're going to take this tonight and we're going to take this pose um, and also still be really mindful about what's happening in our core and in our abdominals, along the side body, our muscles that are pressing into the mat. So go ahead, we're going to come. Um, I'm going to start with my right leg, so I'm going to come, kind of align myself onto my mat. Loop, I'm going to loop my right foot, so I've got my um, strap at the ball of the foot, right? So it's not on the arch and it's not up on the toes, but it's right on the ball of the foot, so I can press into the strap there. I'm going to come back and extend that right leg up into the air. Left leg pressing away. Supta Padangustasana, or in English, hand to big toe, right? Because eventually you may find yourself, or you may already, right? If you're, if you're um, a bit more released in the hamstrings, you might already be hand to big toe. But if not, right, we have this gracious strap that we can use to bridge the gap. We want to feel this back right shoulder blade pressing into the mat. And Press out through that left foot, right? The left foot is extending out away, and this left leg is completely active. So if, you, if I stood up on this, on this left leg, this leg would carry me. I would stand firm. And so breathe through here. You should be feeling all through the belly of the hamstring muscles stretch, right? A nice, long, even stretch. If it's super intense, you could 
bend the knee a little bit to take some of that um, heat off of the stretch, or you would just elongate your loop and let the leg come farther away from the body, right? So there's a couple different ways you could um, address, and if this stretch is a bit too intense, we want to be able to be here long enough to let this, uh, let the hamstring release. And then I'm going to open this leg to the right side, but before I do, I'm going to really make sure that my left glutes are engaged and I'm going to be mindful of my abdominals today, right? I'm not gripping them, but I am prepared. Let's say that. And I'm going to go ahead and let that right leg open to the right side. There's a level of abdominal control that is required so that this leg goes slowly over to the right. And keep pressing out through that foot. Now you're getting inner line of that right leg released. Right? And we're not doing nothing through the abdominals. We're not gripping, but we're not doing nothing. So there's this interesting middle area where we find ourselves, and there's this musculature that is engaged and um, kind of controlling the, the pose, if you will. So find that. It's kind of a whisper of the beginning of this pattern. Go ahead. We're going to inhale this leg up. I'm going to switch hands. I'm going to take the strap with my left hand. And then same thing, right? I'm not going to just flop my right leg over to the left. So we're going to take the parvary where we um, have the twist. I'm going to use abdominal control, right? It's through the abdominal control that we move slowly, slowly as I roll up onto my left hip. Left pinky toes down there at the end of the mat come to the floor. And this leg is only as low as my hip it is. So I don't let this leg go all the way to the floor. I keep it about um, parallel to the floor. Right? And then we have this nice rotation through the abdominals. Breathe through that rotation. And you're getting this IT band stretch on the top of that right leg, right? The, the, the right leg now the outer line of that right leg faces the floor and you get this stretch all through that ID band to come out, bend the right knee, back up we come, release, lower, pause for one moment and just observe left side to right side, right? And feel how those two legs feel differently. And then when you're ready, loop the left foot, Press left foot up toward the ceiling. Strap is at the ball of the foot. Right leg presses away, away, away. Right? And here we are. We find ourselves in this place where right leg presses away. Glutes are engaged. That foot down there at the end of the mat is active. I'm simultaneously pressing up into this strap to get this hamstring release on the back of the left leg. My left shoulder blade is has a relationship to the floor, right? It's not floating up off of the floor. I'm not reaching so far from my strap. I have this press of the left shoulder blade. And then there's this place right here in the abdominals where I say, you know, there's awareness. There's a level of awareness here while the hamstring stretches. And then I'm going to go ahead and let the left leg, using that abdominal control, Slowly let the left leg open to the left side. Yoga, like most of life, is more interesting on the slow journey. <laughs> Where we get to go, oh, that was super interesting. That was something cool to see. Right? So you got to feel how, you know, how this joint moves in the socket, right? Way up in your hip socket. Is it smooth? Is there a clunk? And then when you get to the destination, ah, we have all of this elongation along the inner line of the left leg. Abdominals still, glutes definitely are an anchor, but there is this sense that there's this side abdominal across the mid midsection that is, you know, in control or helping to control the experience a bit as the left leg comes to the left side. Up, the in, uh, inhale and up the leg comes, switch hands, take the strap with the right hand. 
and then we're going to cross. So again, so now it's my opposite side body and my abdominals that are going to engage lightly to control the experience as I roll onto my right hip, right pinky toe down there at the end of my mat, this guy down here, it comes all the way to the floor. And again, here's this left leg, right? I'm not gonna let it droop down to the floor. I'm gonna keep this leg parallel to the floor because it has this relationship to my hip. And I don't wanna cross that line. I wanna keep this leg in line with its hip. And then we, after we've used the abdominals to help us move slowly into this position, then there can be a release, right? Where we get this nice twist through the abdominals, a bit of a ringing out. Keep pressing through that left foot into the strap and IT band now on the left side gets this nice stretch. Bend that knee, unwind back up. We come to the top, release the strap and lower the leg. And then we observe, right? One more observation point where we go left and right sides. How do they feel in comparison? Hopefully even. And then we'll go ahead, bend the knees, roll to one side and press yourself back up away from the floor. All right, we're gonna go into, um, we need spinal waves. We're, we're almost off of the floor. We're gonna do spinal wave variation one. And then if you were sitting on a blanket or a bolster um, for the beginning breath work, keep it handy. We're gonna, after spinal waves, we're gonna come onto our backs and do one more kind of wake up call, <laughs> we'll call it, um, to the abdominals um, before we come up into some standing poses. So first, come on over to face your mat on your hands and knees. And so spinal waves is always about what's happening, like how we talk about spinal waves is always about the experience in the back body. We're always talking about start with the tailbone, tip it toward the floor, then your, then your mid back goes, and then right we round and we dome, and then uh, start with the tailbone lift, and then we extend forward, right? It's always back, back, back. Um, which is true and good. But tonight we're going to talk about what's happening on the front side of the body a little bit. So go ahead, come to all four. Hands right under the shoulders or a little bit before, a little bit ahead, right? This arm can be on a little bit of an angle. And then go ahead, start on an exhale. We'll go through first cycle talking about the back. Tip the tailbone toward the floor, round through the lumbar spine. Thoracic spine rounds. Press into those hands and drop the head and really round up toward the ceiling. And then on the inhale, the tailbone lifts. Right, we start at the tailbone. And then lumbar spine drops. And then we create this valley between the shoulder blades and we invite extension to the thoracic spine and then we extend the neck forward. Try not to look up, right? We're not trying to wrench the back of the neck. We just want to extend forward. And now let's go through that again and think about what's happening on the front body. So as we exhale and the tailbone tips toward the floor, use the abdominals underneath, right, that are facing the floor. Really draw them up and in. Draw the abdominals up and in. And then as we inhale and the tailbone lifts and we extend the spine forward, it's a stretching out of the abdominals, right? There's this forward motion and this elongation through the abdominals. And then a couple more cycles. Just go through flexion and extension using your own breath for timing. And try to be aware, not just of what's happening in the back, but what's happening underneath in the abdominals, right? As we, as the tailbone tips from the floor and we exhale, there's this great drawing in, wakening up of the abdominal. And as we inhale and extend the spine forward, there's this long drawing out, this opportunity to stretch through the abdominals. 
something that we'll feel again at the end of class in Shalambasana, right? This elongation. All right, go ahead. You can, wherever you are in that cycle, kind of come to your last extension forward. And then find your blanket. So I have my blanket. It's just one of my yoga blankets. And I have it folded um, into this narrow, um, like folded in quarters. I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle of my mat, middle-ish, lower middle. <laughs> and I'm going to sit on my blanket. This is going to become a pelvic lift. So I'm going to sit and then come onto my back and I'm going to adjust. I never quite get it in the right spot. So right, you want to have the blanket right on the back of the pelvis, um, on the sacrum, if you will. Sorry, on the, on the sacrum. So I have this little lift and from here I'm going to extend my legs up. So I'm in this L shape. And we're going to find the abdominals and do this lower, right, through the feet um, to start to wake things up before we head towards our last few poses. So before I lower, I'm going to engage. So really engage the abdominals. Find this place where you kind of feel this, this strong, sturdy core. Sometimes it's helpful to hold the edges of the blanket. Um, and take a nice inhale, feel right the inhale, the full length of this pose. And then on your exhale, we're going to exhale and lower, right? Use those abdominals, lower, slow and steady. And I'm only going, because I'm not with you, I'm only going to advise that we lower about two thirds of the way, maybe, maybe a third, depending on what's happening in your low back. Okay, you want to lower until you come to this place where the low back starts to really arch away from the floor and then go ahead inhale back up and come. We're just going to take this slow deliberate journey <laughs> using the abdominals to control the move. Um, let's say three more times. So right before you go inhale feel the outer extremities of the pose and then engage those abdominals and lower slowly as you exhale a nice slow exhale and lower until you come to a place where your low back says that's good back up we come two more times inhale engage abdominals strongly engaged exhale slow exhale And then a slow, controlled lowering of those heels. Keep pressing out through the mid line of those legs. One last time. For me, unless you're ahead of me, then you're already in your break. Inhale, engage, and exhale lower. And then on your last inhale, bend the knees and hug the knees in. So this is child's pose, but on our backs. And we get this extra little tip because we're on this blanket, right? So it really gets, we really get this nice tip in of the pelvis in to the body. Go ahead, bring those toes back to the floor. Safest way to come off of the blanket is to roll again to one side, right? Because you're in that little extra bit of, of extension in the spine. So good to roll to one side. All right, we are going to use a, um, use a downward facing dog to kind of get us up away from the floor. So go ahead and come back to your mat. And we're going to extend out in child's pose. So my toes are together, my knees are a little bit apart, and I'm going to press back into child's pose just to find my distance on the mat, right? My arms are fully extended, palms are pressing into the mat, and the fingers are well spread. 
Right? We want as much surface, um, making contact with the mat. And then from this place, we're going to turn toes to the mat, press ourselves up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Right? And just use this pose as an opportunity to feel those hamstrings that we've already woken up. Feel those side bodies nice and long, right? We've got this nice, long, integrated um, arms pressing, or hands pressing into the mat, and then this long, strong line up into the side body, up toward the waistband, and breathe through. And go ahead, we're going to step, step together, hands and feet walk toward each other, to the middle of the mat. A little pause in Uttanasana, forward fold. And then to come up and out of Uttanasana, we're going to just bend the knees and then press into the mat, up into Uttanasana. So pause a moment. I'm just going to reorient myself so I'm facing the camera. And just pause in this moment, right? Kind of halfway through practice, upright. And try to recapture that sense if you were with me at the very beginning for breath work, right? That sense of inhale, exhale, the breath kind of riding up and down the spine. And the inhale giving the lift. And the exhale giving that grounding sensation down, now down and out through the feet. that to Dasana. And we're going to take um, we're going to take Warrior 3, which I know is a bit like what? <laughs> um, I miss laughing with all of you. <laughs> I know I would always get some good laughs when I would say something silly like that. So, so I'll laugh for all of us. <laughs> um, but Warrior 3 has, um, there's, a, there's a core element to Warrior 3, right? So there are, as we tip forward and hinge forward, there's abdominal control, right? As we open the leg in Suttapada Gustafsa and we thought about that abdominal control. There's that level of abdominal control. There's also this side body, right, as we extend the legs, or extend the hands forward. And there's also this element of, um, it's larger than a small element, it's a big element of back strength. To suspend both arms and one of the legs and have all of that hanging forward and backward in the hinge, in the balance, if you will, and, and all of the work and control it takes through all of these small muscles on this, um, not only on the side, but up into the back as well. So, so that's where we're headed. So I'm going to go a long ways on my mat so you guys can see the side to side here. Um, so I'm going to start by, I'm going to stand into my right foot first. So my left leg is going to lift behind me. So I'm going to really think about my right foot making good contact with the earth. I'm like, you can't see it on the little camera. <laughs> but I'm like spreading my foot out on the mat. My right foot is really kind of taking up as much real estate as it can on the floor. I'm going to inhale my arms up overhead. And then Virabhadrasana 3, it's a forward fold at this right front hip. So this left leg gets a bit like a pendulum, right? I tip forward at that right front hip. And I extend forward. I'm less interested in how high this leg lifts or how far forward we hinge. I'm far more interested in the amount of reach we have away. So I want as much reach as we can get forward and really think about extending that back leg back behind you. And then it's a matter of abdominal control, side body control, back body strength. 
Africa. And arms come down. And then I'm gonna stretch my my left foot out along the mat, right? Really think about um, spreading that left foot, getting as much contact with the mat as you can. Inhale, both arms up overhead. And then hinging at the left front hip, right leg sort of swings in the balance as we hinge forward. And we extend the fingertips forward and we press that foot back. The toes on that back foot are headed toward the mat, right? Sometimes we try to open. It's easier, frankly. <laughs> So see if while you're in this Virabhadrasana 3, you can be in a place where you know that those toes are pointed toward the floor while that foot really presses out away from you. And then it's a matter of abdominal control, sides on control, back muscle strength. Right? It's just, the back muscles are like a suspension bridge. Right, all of this is suspended from the back muscles. Up we come. Exhale, arms down to the side. Nice. All right. And I always say with those balance poses, a couple things. One is balance is like any other muscle. The more you practice balance, the more you'll have of it. So don't shy away from it. Um, and the other thing is, you can always use, I'm going to back up right so you can see here, like if you've got a, a chair or an armchair close by, and it's helpful just to figure out the back of the pose, right, while, it, while this leg you're figuring out the press and checking that the toes are pointed toward the floor, right, you can use that little balance check out ahead. And then maybe extend the hands forward or just sort of stay in place. We're going to step wide. So both legs go wide. All 10 toes face forward. If you've got a black handy and you'd like it, place it out ahead. And then take a nice inhale. Feel that length up the spine as you inhale. And then this is a slow, this is a slow go. Right? Exhale slowly. Use that abdominal control, side, back muscles, right? All of that works to move us slowly into the pose. Wide leg forward fold. Pasarita Parashanasana. Right, you use the block to find the place where the pose ends for you. So you might need the block, you might just take the floor. Breathe through and press, right? We want to press through the pinky edges of the foot so the arches uh, are lifted and we have this ascending energy up from the arches up through the inner lines of the leg. And then if we went deeper than the block, then rewind. So come back to the block so the back is parallel to the floor. You could heel toe in a little bit. Hands to the hips. Inhale. Ah, back muscles bring us back up. Step the feet together. Set this block aside and come down to the mat. <clears throat> so we're going to take our last Two poses. This 45 minutes goes fast. Not sure if anyone else agrees. <laughs> we're going to take our last two poses. Um, we're going to take boat and we're going to take uh, locust. So, right there, like the front body, back body poses. Um, so, I'm going to, again, go this, go, go long ways on my mat so you can see side of poses. I'm going to have my strap, so I've minimized the loop, and I just got this nice long tail. And I'm just going to have it handy. And so, 
We'll start with half the boat. Right, so boat is a, there's a balance element here. We're gonna rock back and find this kind of fulcrum uh, where we can balance. Parallel the calves to the mat. And then one of the components, if you wanna come down and get your belt, one of the layers that I really like is the belt helps us, right? Sometimes I see this in boat, rounding through the back and you can see my shoulders are reaching forward. There's an element of boat that should be like this. So the spine, the abdominal, should be like on a ramp, not curved. And the shoulders, instead of rounding forward, should be plugged into their sockets. So using the belt on the feet, and I've got a little space between my feet, they're not jammed together, and my feet are hip distance apart in the belt, helps me to find the right shape. Ah, so I go, okay, so I've got this, my abdominals are working to keep this ramped shape on the front body. And then the belt is helping me keep my shoulders plugged in. And then from here, you can just drop the belt and keep the shape. Or you might wobble a little bit in, in space. But it reminds us, right, that we're not in this position, we're not rounded, but we're ex spines and extension, shoulders are plugged in. Go ahead, take a little break, tip forward, cross those legs, and just a loose forward fold, right? Nothing dramatic, just a little break. And then one more pass. And take the strap again. Set yourself up in Ardha Namasana. And then drop. And test the waters, right? This might be a no-go. But you can work toward extending the legs, keeping your balance, keeping all this abdominal engagement, and keeping those shoulders plugged in. Go break. Set the belt aside. And a little counter. We'll just take this one little trip to counter all of that work. Right front, side, back, all of that musculature. This is going to be a little break for those abdominals. So I've got this blanket here, a little extra cushion for my hips. I'm going to set up in space and then go ahead and lift back, right? We peel ourselves up and away from the mat. So we've got extension on the front side now and work on the back side. So glutes are working, yes, because the legs are lifted, but back muscles, right? All of the back muscles are working. Go ahead, release. Let your, let your forehead release into the back of your hand. And then go ahead and set up one more time. Set up in Sphinx. And then go ahead, peel. Right, you can leave the feet down. If that feels like too much, you just want to focus on what's happening here. Fingers extend. Um, press those shoulder blades together, really deep valley between the spine or along the spine. Breathe. Head faces the floor so the back of the neck is nice and long. And release. Go ahead, press away from the floor. Remove that blanket. Last little counter pose. It's like pose, counter pose, pose, counter pose. Ah, child pose here. And let it just be passive. So just release the forehead into the mat. The arms don't have to be extended. They can just be alongside the body. 
And just use the breath to stretch all of the muscles, right? You take a nice deep breath in child's pose to stretch the muscles that we're just working. You want to press in to the mat and start to set up for Shavasana. It's right up to that time. So a bit of a head pillow. I always recommend a head pillow because it sets our chin into the right position. And then if that's all you want, then lie back and get into Shavasana. I'm going to stay seated and just talk you into Shavasana and give you a couple minutes of silence before we move on. So take your time. I always say be picky in your Shavasana setup. Um, you know, if something doesn't feel right, take a minute before you set back and down and in um, to adjust and to make sure that you feel settled and well, and well supported. Really, that's the key in Shavasana is your support. So take time and care to set yourself up. And then once you're there, let go of all of the musculature along the legs. The toes can go off to the left and right. Feel like the back of the pelvis settles evenly into your mat. Right, so really think about the left and right side of the pelvis. Does it feel evenly weighted? Release all, all and any of the muscles that are making contact with the mat along the back. Release all of those muscles. Kind of feel like you've melted into the mat in the places where you're making contact. Let the back of your skull release into the blanket or into the mat. And then yield all of your facial muscles. Feel like your face is just a soft piece of gauze. That your skin is a soft piece of gauze over your face. Everything is muted and softened and melting back toward gravity. Let the eyes relax and the jaw unhinge. So come back from Shavasana, just come back first to the breath. 
Let the physical body stay just as it is and just invite your next inhale in a little more deeply. But more fully. Let that awareness spread from the breath out through the limbs to the hands and the feet. When you're ready, you can bend one knee at a time, bringing the feet back to the mat. Then roll to one side and pause a moment on your side, right? Round the back, support the head on your side. And then when you're ready, use that upper hand to press into the floor and slowly bring yourself back up to sitting. together in front of your heart. Feel the lift of the sternum in gratitude. And so thank you for joining this first Tuesday. The first first is the first Tuesday. It's the first of the month. So we'll be back um, for the consecutive Tuesdays in September, same time, same format, um, Facebook Live. So we'll hope to see you again and appreciate your energy and, um, and your practice and your time. And I hope everybody has a great rest of their evening and a great rest of their week as we go on from here. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>